the Seven Kingdoms needs a ruler loved by millions with a powerful army and the right family name. Good luck finding him. Who said anything about him? I'm not going to stop the wheel. I'm going to break the wheel. A double shooting in Nassau Village leaves one man dead and another in critical condition. A family traumatized following a home invasion in Golden Gates, a baby boy fighting for his life, plus Island Luck launches own Bahamas. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Vonnie Toot and NB12 starts now. news tonight, gunmen opened fire on two men this morning, killing one of them and leaving the other in hospital in critical condition. Police say the double shooting happened in Nassau Village at around 11 a.m. Distraught family members gathered on the scene as the victim's body was loaded into a hearse. Dana Smith has the details. Police say the victims were pursued by two gunmen, one armed with a handgun, the other with an assault rifle. One of the victims collapsed and died right outside this barber shop. The other was found in a nearby home and taken to hospital. He's in critical condition. Uh, information received was that uh, two males were seen running and being pursued by two men, one armed with what appeared to be an assault weapon and the other a handgun. The Shots were discharged in the direction of both of these males, where one of them attempted to run into a barber shop and he collapsed. Uh, EMS responded here and pronounced him lifeless. Roll said the incident occurred around 11 a.m. at Alexandria Boulevard. He said officers were alerted after receiving reports of gunshots being fired. After responding, they met the victim's body on the ground with multiple gunshot wounds. Roll said the second victim was found alive at a nearby residence, also suffering from multiple gunshot injuries. Shortly afterwards, officers were directed to a residence on Price Street where a second male was found suffering from multiple gunshots to the back. Uh, EMS has transported that particular individual to hospital where he is listed right now in critical condition. Family members at the scene identified the victim as 28-year-old DeAntoine Burroughs. The other victim, who was in hospital, is 27 years old, according to police. Roll said investigations are still in their preliminary stages, and officers are now on the hunt for the gunman, who Roll said escaped in a car. Our information is that the persons after this shooting left this area in a silver or gray small vehicle. We appeal to anyone with information on this to reach out to us and help us to advance this investigation here in the Nassau Village area this morning. Police are asking anyone with information on this incident to contact them at 911 or 919 or Crime Stoppers at 328-TIPS. From Nassau Village for NB12, I'm Dana Smith. The parents of a disabled teen are outraged after robbers allegedly put a gun to his head and held a knife to his throat during a home invasion. They say they arrived home yesterday and found their son in tears. Kai Joaquin has the story. So this criminal is still on the loose and he threatened my son. He had no mask on. He said if my son said it and says anything, he's going to come back and kill him. We're talking about a disabled child. What's going on in this country? 
Those are the cries of a mother retelling the story of how she and her husband arrived home yesterday to meet their 19-year-old wheelchair-bound son crawling on the floor crying for help. Intruders had reportedly broken into their home through their bedroom window and realized that someone was home. They put a gun to his head. They put a knife to his throat. And they punch a disabled child. There's somebody who can do nothing for himself. On a road student, very intelligent, passed up with six BGCSEs. And this is what's happened. He said, Mommy, if I was home, if I, if I wasn't home, if I was working, this wouldn't have happened to me. But because he's disabled, this is. The family says the neighborhood just off Carmichael Road is a relatively quiet one. Cash says she's usually home with her son throughout the day and never imagined that something like this would happen. She believes, though, if she was home, it may have ended much worse. His father, Gregory Cash Sr., said when they walked in the house and saw things thrown all over, they knew something was wrong. What made it worse, he said, is when they called for their son, he didn't answer right away. He had locked himself in the bathroom, afraid. This is a young man who um, would have represented, who would have been a national spelling bee champ mm -hmm. when doctors... First, when he first started, I would say he would never be able to go to a regular school. Mm -hmm. So with God's help, he has been able to defy those odds. Yes. And to see this happening now mm -hmm. is, 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 is terrible. Yes. Gregory Jr. is a graduate of Anatol Rogers and did so with honors. He has cerebral palsy and is the third of five children. The remaining four children, all national athletes. And according to their mother, they aren't taking the news too well. But my sons, they're so angry that they're asking him how this boy looks. They want to take the law in their own hands. I say, no, leave it in God's hands. And, but that is what our government has caused this country to come to because they refuse to do anything about crime. Persons are now taking the law in their own hands. The day after this home invasion, this family is praying for something to be done to fix the country's vexing crime problem. Despite going through that frightening ordeal, Gregory still has a smile on his face and says he forgives whoever did this. Do not feel safe, but I know God's keeping me, and He will keep me safe. And I just wanna, I just wanna forgive the persons who harm me. I don't want to no harm. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Police on Eleuthera are investigating the death of an American man. We're told that around 10 a.m. Thursday, a 33-year-old man from North Carolina was kiteboarding off Schooner Bay when he lost control and crashed into the water. He was later pronounced dead at a local clinic. Police say an autopsy will be performed to determine the cause of death. And the victim of a traffic accident has succumbed to his injuries. Police say the 67-year-old man was the passenger in a Honda Accord Thursday afternoon when the female driver lost control of the vehicle and crashed into a tree on Tonic Williams Darling Highway. The woman was treated in hospital for her injuries and discharged. However, the male passenger died. Citing work demands, co-chair of the Bahamas' National Reparations Committee, Alfred Sears, has resigned nearly a year after he was appointed to that position. Sears said given his obligation as chairman of the College of the Bahamas, which is transitioning to university status, and the demands at his law firm, he has not been able to give the committee the time and attention he feels it deserves. Sears told us he informed his co-chair, Philip Smith, and Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell of his decision. However, he said his resignation in no way reflects his lack of commitment to the objectives of the committee, which was announced on March 24, 2014, ahead of a formal push by CARICOM heads to get reparations, debt cancellation, and an apology from former European colonizers. We have heard very little about the committee's work since appointments were made. However, Sears insisted that committee has been doing quite a lot of work.